Hello. About a month ago I released a video on the topic of who built Gobekli Tepe, the famous Neolithic site in Turkey. And among the comments I received on that video, a recurring theme were the three enigmatic objects that occur at the top of Pillar 43 at that site. And I'll just give you an example, I'll read a few of the comments that occurred on that topic. One says, the top of that one stone reveals the likeness of three purses. I seem to remember that there are a multitude of hieroglyphics in Egypt showing figures carrying exactly that same shape of the item in their hands, beyond a coincidence. The thing in Egyptian iconography to which this particular commenter refers is probably the Ankh symbol, which I think many of you will agree doesn't really look a whole lot like a handbag. Another one says, I noticed those too. If they were in Egypt, Tigris Euphrates, and in the Americas, that poses new questions about the mobility of ancient human societies. Yet another says, and yet you omit saying anything about the pillar with those etched handbags that are always noted or carved in Sumerian self-documentation relating to their gods. And this one says, another video says the handbags of Babylon represented portable temples, the square bag representing earth and the arched handle the heavens. While some people are happy to interpret these things simply as baskets or handbags of some kind, uh, perhaps for carrying seeds. Others want to attach mis mysterious significance to them, in some cases even associate them with some extraterrestrial civilization, claiming that these might be laptop computers or even anti-gravity devices, while others associate them with something religious, perhaps as representations of the cosmos or deities. Given the great deal of interest in this topic, I thought I should do a video specifically on it, and uh, in this one, what I'll do is I'll discuss the issue of whether or not these are actually handbags or baskets or buckets or something like that. Uh, and if they are, uh, whether or not it's significant that similar kinds of things are found around the world. And finally, I'll, I'll offer an alternative interpretation of these three symbols at the top of Pillar 43. A number of authors who would like this image on Pillar 43 to be some kind of mystery have suggested that these objects with handles are similar to ones pictured some 7,000 years later in Assyrian art. Here we see what seems to be a metal bucket, usually held in the left hand of either a human being or some winged mythological creature. With the other hand, that person or creature holds what appears to be a pine cone, and may be using the pine cone to splash either water or pollen from the bucket onto a tree. This seems to be a sacred tree found in Sumerian, Babylonian, and Assyrian images of rituals. Some of these authors have also pointed to other purse-like or bucket-like symbols found in various parts of the world, including this example of an Olmec relief from Mexico, and perhaps even stirrup-handled bottles from pre-classic Mexico. And some people also draw attention to these stone objects from the Giraffe culture in southern Iran, as potentially being similar to those symbols on Pillar 43. Of course, it wouldn't be particularly surprising if cultures around the world use some kind of basket or bucket in order to collect things like seeds and berries. However, rather than accepting a mundane explanation such as this, some authors turn to interpretations that they apparently consider to be far more intriguing. For example, Sullivan suggests one possible theory for the proliferation of this image is its simple and straightforward representation of the cosmos. Thus, Sullivan appears to consider the so-called handle of this image as analogous to the vault of the heavens as represented by the goddess Nut in Egyptian iconography. However, notice that the goddess Nut is emblazoned with stars. The handles on both the Gobeke Tepe objects and the Assyrian ones are not. In a similar vein, astronomers Martin Sweatman and Dimitrios Tsitsikris suggest that the boxes with handles from Gobekli Tepe might represent sunsets or sunrises. But the fact that these occur in a group of three raises some problems with this argument. Had it been a pair of these objects, one could make the argument that they represented, for example, the summer and winter solstices. But it's hard to imagine how a triplet of sunrises or sunsets makes any sense. A more straightforward and mundane interpretation of this symbol, whether or not as a basket, would seem more likely. And at first glance, 
Baskets, whether ancient or modern, are such a common type of artifact that it would not be particularly surprising if people at Gobekli Tepe had them. What this comes down to is an argument by analogy, because some people think that these three objects on the pillar look a bit like baskets, or perhaps purses or handbags. An analogy is a type of inductive argument that's based on comparisons. We notice that two things are very similar to one another in attributes that we can observe. We then conclude that the two things might also be similar in ways that we cannot observe. For example, here we have two objects, and the one in the bottom is an artifact that we can be pretty confident is an arrowhead, perhaps because we sometimes find it still hafted to an arrow shaft with fletching. And we can notice several points of similarity between these two artifacts. Both are pointed at one end. Both are made from hard materials. Both are quite sharp. Both have two barbs. Both have a tang opposite the point, and both are able to pierce animal carcasses if thrust with enough force. Thus, we might conclude, with a reasonable probability, that the upper artifact is also an arrowhead, even though we've never seen it hafted on an arrow shaft. So let's now specify the analogy between these Gobekli Tepe objects and modern baskets. One of the more obvious points of similarity is that both the Gobekli Tepe object and at least some kinds of modern baskets have a sort of arch on the top. In the case of the baskets, it's a handle to facilitate carrying the basket around. In addition, at least some baskets have a sort of cylindrical body that's used as the container, and when viewed from the side, it looks kind of rectangular, and that could also be a point of similarity with the Gobekli Tepe objects. However, those are really the only points of similarity between these two things. For example, the analogy would have been stronger had the Gobekli Tepe objects shown some indication of woven or coiled fabric on the sides of that rectangle. However, the sides on the objects depicted on the pillar are smooth. And we know that the artists at Gobekli Tepe were perfectly capable of indicating woven designs because, in fact, they indicated very weave-like designs on this very same pillar. Had the artist who decorated this pillar wanted to indicate baskets, you would think we would now see some kind of texture on their sides. So, we're left with only two relevant points of similarity. Meanwhile, there are also several points of dissimilarity. Of these two objects, the basket is normally symmetrical, but the Gobekli objects show a distinct projection to one side. Those who want to argue for baskets, handbags, or for that matter sunrises, simply ignore this projection. Another point of dissimilarity is that the Gobekli Tepe objects are consistently shown with a small icon of an animal at the upper right. It's hard to imagine what these little animals could possibly have to do with baskets or handbags, given that their contents were more likely to be something like seeds or berries, Yet the iconography at Gobekli Tepe is noticeably lacking in images of seeds, fruit, or anything else that we might plausibly associate with baskets or handbags. In addition, interpretation of that arch as a handle would be much more plausible if we ever saw it grasped by a human hand, as in the case of those Assyrian reliefs that are supposedly similar. In short, the analogy to a basket is not very strong perhaps not much stronger than the analogy to children's toy cars, as ridiculous as the latter obviously is. Furthermore, although no Neolithic baskets appear to have survived in Turkey, and any baskets that existed there wouldn't necessarily look like those in other parts of the Mediterranean region, we can say that the rare surviving baskets from ne Neolithic of Spain and Israel as well as baskets from pre-dynastic Egypt, are without arched handles. Even baskets shown in New Kingdom art are without handles, as their bearers carry the baskets on their shoulders. Analogies to buckets, like the ones in Assyrian reliefs, don't fare much better. There is no question that these are metal buckets, similar in some ways 
to this bucket from Iran that dates to about a thousand years ago. But we don't have to go so far afield to find examples of buckets like this, because the actual Assyrian buckets are sometimes found in excavations in Iraq. They're made of copper or bronze, or occasionally even silver. And we even know what the Assyrians called these buckets, because they are described in texts. They are dalu. And Akkadian dictionaries define dalu as vessels for drawing water. So these buckets had a perfectly practical purpose, even though they were occasionally also used in rituals. And we don't need to cite analogies to vessels in Mexico or Australia, or even at Gobekli Tepe, in order to explain their presence in Assyrian art. And there's certainly nothing in Assyrian texts to suggest that they are, quote, a straightforward representation of the cosmos. They're just water buckets. And making a big mystery of it makes about as much sense as ascribing cosmological significance to the Jack and Jill nursery rhyme, which, after all, also prominently features a bucket. And if the analogy to buckets is no more compelling than the one to baskets or handbags, what might these symbols at Gobekli Tepe actually indicate? Well, it's probably not something analogous to these stone objects from the early Bronze Age of Iran. These solid stone objects are almost certainly weights for use with a beam balance in order to weigh produce. We currently have no indication that the early Neolithic people associated with Gobekli Tepe had any knowledge of beam balances or weights. So we still have to look elsewhere. One potentially simple and straightforward explanation, to borrow a few words from Sullivan, is that these might indicate the actual buildings at Gobekli Tepe. Given that the pillars at Gobekli Tepe are too unstable to remain standing erect on their own, it's highly likely that they depended on a roof structure in order to stabilize them. And in an article I published in 2011, I hypothesized on the basis of the differential heights of the pillars that this probably would have been a somewhat vaulted or domed roof, perhaps a thatched one. And if my conjectural reconstruction of this roof is even approximately correct, it's possible that that arch on the tops of these objects represents the dome of the roof. This interpretation also accommodates that projection on the right side of these objects, because some of the Gobekli buildings appear to have had an entrance passageway, sometimes with a formal stone doorway called a U-stone. My conjectural reconstruction of what one of these buildings might have looked like bears several points of similarity to those Gobekli Tepe so-called handbags, including the dome of the roof, the side walls, and the projection to one side. And one other relevant point of similarity is that each structure at Gobekli Tepe seems to be associated with one prominent animal, such as a fox or wild boar. Thus it seems possible that these more prominent animals represented the clan, lineage, or totem of a particular social group that was associated with each of these buildings. And the small animal icon to upper right would thus identify which three buildings were meant to be represented by these symbols. Although this interpretation could also be incorrect, the fact that there are more points of similarity between the Pillar 43 objects and the buildings that go back at Tepe than there are to baskets, handbags, or buckets arguably makes this a stronger analogy. If those objects on Pillar 43 do represent buildings, then that weave-like pattern that I mentioned earlier could represent the ground, or vegetation on the ground, while that row of little rectangles could represent a track or pathway. Of course, we all have to admit that none of us really knows for sure what those three objects at the top of Pillar 43 really are. However, even if they are something like baskets, handbags, or buckets, one doesn't have to attach a lot of mystery to that because it's presumably true that such artifacts were invented independently in many parts of the world. So the fact that you see a basket in Mesoamerica and you see a basket in Iraq or Turkey or the Indus Valley doesn't mean that there were connections between the people who made those things. A basket or a bag is a pretty obvious kind of technology to make. 
and it doesn't take a genius to figure out how to make them. However, as I've tried to argue in this video, I think there's a simpler explanation. I think that these images are actually showing the buildings at Gobeki Tepe itself, and that they had some kind of curved roof, perhaps a thatched one, as in the reconstruction I provided here today. Anyway, as the research continues, maybe we will find more pictures of these things and we'll have a better idea of what they actually were and were used for. Thank you, and stay safe.